In this video I'm going to be talking about the DJI Syndense remote controller for the Inspire 2 and M200 series and specifically I'm going to be showing you guys the removable ear module on the remote itself as well as lifting the lid on the patch antenna and just giving you guys a bit of a sneak peek in there to show you how that works. Okay, so we'll start with the remote controller itself. Now, the Syndense currently works with the Inspire 2, the M200 series, as well as the original Phantom 4 Pro. And for the first time on a DJI remote controller, the E module, the wireless unit, is actually removable, and you can replace it with a different one. Now, currently, there is only one available, but DJI have stated in the future they may make more modules, so if they come out with a new wireless protocol, you would be able to slip a new module in the back and continue to use your remote controller without having to spend all that money on the remote itself. As I mentioned, there is only currently one module and that works with the Inspire 2. A couple of people have asked me, do I think they'll do one for the Mavic series, an OcuSync one? As it stands today, I don't think they will. However, you never know in the future. I just don't think there's a professional range of products around that setup currently to warrant them doing it but who knows what's around the corner as for support for the older systems so lightbridge 2 or the inspire 1 i just think we're probably a bit late in the day now to have that if there is going to be a module i think it will be for supporting whatever comes in the future Okay, so to remove the module, you'll need to undo four screws. It is this one and this one located below the antennas. And there is then one here and one here under the bottom of the remote that you need to undo as well. Once the four screws are removed, you simply withdraw the module out the back of the remote controller. You'll see that it gently slides out and it reveals the main radio module with the PCI type connection on the bottom. Now, when you look in the back of the remote itself, you can see the connection down at the back with a actual cooling fan sitting at the top middle, and that blows the air up the middle over the heat sink on the back of the radio module, which then pushes it out of the air vents at the back here. Looking closer at the radio module at the bottom here, you can see that connection that I spoke about. You then have a heat sink that runs up the middle with your ear goes and blows out the vent at the top. And you will see the radio connection wires on each side. On the left hand side, you have the connections that go to the two main antenna ports. And on the right hand side, you have two connections that go to these patch antennas that are glued up in the top at the back of the remote controller behind the DJI logo. Now, my understanding of how this system works is as follows. My belief is that the main 2.4 gig radio only goes through the main antenna ports and when you are on 5 gigahertz mode it uses the ceramic patch antennas in the center. Now when we go back to the old Inspire 1 where it had a 5 gig antenna for the dual ops communication they had to use a dual PCB and the left hand antenna had two wires going to it. We don't have that in this situation so my personal belief is that side is purely 2.4 gigahertz which comes from the left hand side radio and then the 5 gigahertz section which is over on this radio here only feeds the patch antennas located in the top and that is basically an identical setup to what you have in the remote controller for the original Phantom 4 Pro because just like that model the Inspire 2 supports both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz as well. Looking at the back, obviously you have all of the usual outputs on this module. So you have SDI, micro USB, CAN bus, HDMI and USB-A. If you were to damage one of these ports, to be honest, I don't think replacing them is an option. They are soldered very, very minutely to the main PCB and there is virtually no access to it. Something else that was asked is could you change these main antenna connections? And actually my answer to that would be yes because they basically are simply wired come down and go on to MMCX ports down here on the left hand side and these will very simply pop off with a little bit of a gentle tug he says 
there we go and they will pop off and they are standard MMCX connectors so in theory you would be very easily able to replace that with a different connector or simply repair it with a proper connector and then plug the wire back into the MMCX port on the radio module itself. As I said, currently this is the only radio module available for the Sindens remote controller. However, in the future, you never know, DJI may produce an updated module. And if they do, you would simply take it, take your remote controller, gently slide it into the back, lock it in place, put your screws in, and it would be ready to rock and roll. Next, we're going to take a closer look at the patch antenna itself. OK, before we get started, I just want to show you what happens when you have the patch connected on the latest firmware for the DJI Sindense remote. Because when you first had this with the patch antenna, which is there, you could not tell it was actually connected. Whereas on firmware version 02.00.0900, it now shows you and indicates when the patch antenna is connected and that is as follows I've got it connected on just the RF ports but not the CAN bus if I turn the remote controller on and wait for it to boot when you plug the patch antenna in you will get a double beep to confirm it's been connected when you disconnect it you will also get the same double beep but that is indicating that the patch antenna is actually connected to the remote controller. Alongside that, you will also get a message along the bottom status bar here saying patch antenna connected. Now that only shows when your Sindense is connected to your Inspire 2. Mine's currently in the house, I haven't got it in the workshop. But it will show up just like this to show you that the patch antenna is connected. Now that only happens on the latest firmware and you must have both the Sindense and the patch antenna on the latest firmware as well. Now a question that's been asked to me a few times is what happens if I've updated the remote controller but I've not updated the patch because I didn't have it connected when I did the firmware. The first thing I would try doing is connect everything up, connect it back to DJI GO 4. In the top right hand corner, hold down the three lines for 10 seconds and that will give you the hidden menu that allows you to downgrade or refresh the firmware on the remote controller. See if it will let you do it. If it will, make sure you do that with the patch antenna connected. If you can't do that, and no matter what you do with the latest firmware, you don't get the double beep and you don't especially get patch antenna connected along the bottom here, probably your patch is faulty and it needs to go back to DJI to be repaired. To get inside the patch, you simply need to remove these four screws that are located on the back. Once the screws are removed to get into the patch antenna, you will simply need to release some clips that run around the side. Now, if you've ever got into an iPad or an iPhone, you're going to want something like a plastic splutch or whatever they call it. For me, one of my personal favourite tools is a small 5-inch plastic propeller. And it then will simply pop into the gap and allow me to release the plastic clips without doing any damage at all to the antenna itself. Okay, once you lift the lid on the patch, you will see inside that it reveals the main PCB antennas, and there are two of these, one on the left and one on the right. And these are etched antennas, so the, so the antenna elements themselves are etched onto the main PCB board. These are then soldered in place and go down to a control board located in the middle down there. Now, the main wires for the antenna come in at the bottom, at the left and the right. They then go to that little board and that board then is controlling the two individual PCB antennas themselves. Now, as mentioned, these antenna and this board does have its own firmware on board. So when you update your Sindense remote controller, you need to make sure that you update it with this flat panel antenna connected because that little board that controls the antenna 
does need its firmware updating as well. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the board does, if it's purely amplification, or is it actually a type of diversity setup, but either way, there is control on board that board to allow it to work and give you that extra signal that the patch antenna does. And that is it for this video. I just wanted to take you guys quickly through the Syndense with a removable module, talk you through the patch as we did, and basically take a sneak peek inside and just have a look at what's actually in there. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do support the channel. There are links in the description that allow you to purchase some of the products you have seen, as well as please do subscribe to the channel as well, and I will do another video again soon.